you think successful leadership is about for team success? I think it no matter well it depends on the area. Yeah. The area you're in, whether it be football or business or whatever. Yeah. I think you've got to have credibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you've really got to have credibility and uh, um, and you know each role in leadership is different depending on the sphere that you're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very and and just to say can't blush, this is the way leaders should be. I don't think that's the case. Yeah. Um, different things different things for different situations. I think it may be a classic and I don't know terribly much about history, but it fascinated me that for example, Winston Churchill was, uh, a leader, the Prime Minister of England through the Second World War. Now, mm. um, I don't know how good a leader he was, but he was certainly inspirational in the way he t- spoke mm. to the uh, English population when they were facing the German army and being invaded. Yeah. Yet Attlee took over as soon as the war was over. Attlee took over as Prime Minister. You mentioned how you would take on feedback as it was constructive and then you, you would use that from people that you respected mm. to get better. How would you give feedback to players that were looking up to you and that sort of thing? Well, um, I said, oh, well, I've been in my case, I said, well, if you're talking about football, I thought yeah. Yeah, for, football. Uh, for football, well, I trained hard, yeah. harder than anyone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried to cover all aspects so I could, you know, and I wasn't the best at everything like endurance running, sprinting or whatever, but I was certainly up in the top group. Yeah. Strength-wise, I, you know, I did all of that stuff and I really did work on my skill. Mm-hmm. So I believed in that way, you know, you, you set the example for the others. I'm not one to sit down and talk mm-hmm. and say and encourage because I think once you've got to start and talk and encourage people, they've got a weakness in their character anyway. Yeah. And you, you just, in a, in a game of football. Yeah. You know, it's uh, and so you've got to win your stripes in a football team, as I had to, and you've got to be accepted by the group, and uh, that's only done by your performance. What type of work would you do to get yourself prepared for a game? Was, was there I think, as I said, mentioned earlier, you you conditioned that I started at this, in a bottom team, and you mm. become contemptuous mm. of the opposition. You you know because of the fact that they're winning. Mm-hmm. And then you start to win and start to climb that sand, you know, the sand castle and you get to the king of the castle and uh, then they're coming at you. And I used to love it when you were at the top of the castle and they were coming at you, you'd belt them down again. Yeah, <laughs> give it back. Give it back. And what about your biggest challenges as a player um, and what did you learn from them? Biggest challenges as a player? Um, well, when you're not gifted, uh, and you're working all the time. Everything's a challenge mm. to me. I can't. I didn't see any funny side of football. There was nothing humorous about football at all. Mm. Um, you know, you had to. Well, I certainly steal steeled myself for every game that I I played because I had to perform, and uh, I didn't find them very enjoyable at all. Uh, you probably look back and you look at your the only thing you look at now is your achievements and mm. we did achieve so that's all I get satisfaction out of is that we did achieve yeah as an individual you've had a lot of accolades with awards and then also team success what would be your main highlight when you look back at your career well see this is where we're wrong with the guard it's a t- it's not an individual sport, football, and I'd, I've never subscribed to individual success. Mm. The, you know, the media or the club, they have best and fairest and all that. I don't think you're starting to break the team ethos down or culture down. It's what the team does achieve. And mm. and to share that with a group of fellows and to achieve, there's got to, there is, I can tell you, there's just brutal honesty amongst a group. You're instrumental in the preventing Hawthorne from merging with Melbourne in the mm. mid-90s. Um, why did you take on that role and, and and talk us through sort of your that campaign? Well, the reason I took it on was uh, I used to, I was commentating for Channel 7. I used to do special comments and uh, prior to a game, I would ring the particular clubs that I was commentating on for that week mm. and find out a little bit of information about the players. And I remember talking to Graham Allen, Gubby Allen, uh, Collingwood had the Collingwood game that week and he just mentioned about 
something about Hawthorne merging with, um, oh, there was some talk. You know, just, there, there yeah. was just a bit of a whisper. This yeah, is in right. football circles. Yeah. It wasn't out there. Yeah. And then on the Sunday, it just happened to be that all premiership players that had ever played for Hawthorne had a photograph uh, taken at Glenfrey Oval, all right. in white shirts, and every player that had played in the premiership 